Well, good morning, everyone. A special Sunday, Remembrance Sunday. And we come together today in gratitude and thanksgiving as we remember the great sacrifice that so many have made for the freedom and the liberty we have today. We come into the presence of Almighty God, who is the Father of all the nations of the world. And we thank God for the coming of Jesus into the world, the Prince of Peace. He shall be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in his name we come today to treasure and the memories of those who have given so much and to seek the ways of peace and righteousness for all the peoples of the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we heard you even in the sea of disorder and in the darkness of the void crying, let there be light, and there was light. We thank you that you are a redeeming God and we thank you, Lord, that you are the one who sent your beloved Son into the world to be the means of our forgiveness and to be the source of reconciliation for all the peoples of this world. And Father, we thank you for the assurance that we have through your word. If God is for us, who can be against us? For this time of praise and worship, Lord, we seek your blessing now and thank you for the love of Jesus that meets with us, he who is the Prince of Peace. Amen. We sing together the hymn, dear friends, O God, our help in ages past. friends come first of all from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 2 where we read from verses 1 to 5 and then from the New Testament from the Gospel of Matthew verses, chapter 5 verses 43 to 48. 
In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And then from the New Testament, we read from the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verses 43 to 48, the words of Jesus. You have heard it said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. May God bless to us our readings from his word. Amen. Let us join together in our prayers. Let us pray. Father, we gather today on this day of remembrance to thank you for your love and faithfulness to us. The word has reminded us today, Lord, that we come into the presence of a God who is the father of all the nations of the world. And we thank you for the words of prophecy quoted by Isaiah, that the day will come when all nations will seek the mountain of the Lord and seek to worship the God who is righteous and just and whose name is love. We thank you, Lord, that in the beginning you said, let there be light and there was light. And that light brought hope and peace and justice and righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that the apostle of old said that there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And so today, Lord, our hearts are filled with hope for a better tomorrow. A tomorrow when there will be no more rumors of war or wars, where conflicts will cease and nations of the world will, would live in accord and unity together where we would extend a hand of care and kindness to all, and that we would not seek the ways of injustice and prejudice and racism and fear, but seek always the ways that you have ordained, of going that extra mile of loving our neighbour, of seeking to do good and to bring light where there is darkness around us. Father, today we remember, and thank you for those who in the flower of the years give up everything placed everything on the altar of service for the country they loved. Those, Father, who sacrificed their lives, those who still suffer trauma, those, Lord, who remember today, those they have loved and lost a while. And in churches and chapels and cenotaphs and villages and towns throughout our land today, people will gather to remember and to give thanks, lest we forget the sacrifice that was made lest we forget those who gave so much, lest we take for granted the sacrifices that were made that we might live in liberty and freedom. We honour our dead today, Lord. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for their goodness. We thank you, Lord, that they gave everything. And we remember and we give thanks today for every single one. Father, as we gather today, we meet in hope, Lord. We thank you for faith in the living God, the faith once given to the saints. We thank you for the hope that rises from our faith, that the day will soon come when there will be no more pain or sorrow, for the former things will have passed away. We thank you for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And we pray today that the gospel message will find a home in every land, that we might seek the ways of living together in unity and accord. Lord, we pray today for those who still suffer because of the ravages of war, 
those who have been traumatized, those, Father, who have been injured in conflicts that still rage in many parts of our world, those who feel disenfranchised because of the experiences that they have had on the battlefront, those who suffer from mental health issues and suffer great trauma. Heavenly Father, may the healing balm of your presence bring peace to their hearts, and may they know that you stand aside with them in the midst of the trauma and the ravages that they feel. And Father, we thank you again for Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. We thank you for the message that we share today of his eternal love. Father, forgive us, we pray, that there in, the, in the world today exists many conflicts and many wars and rumours of wars. Forgive us today that there are many refugees and migrants who, who feel unsafe in their land of their origin and are seeking a better life. Give us tolerance and understanding of each other, Lord, and, and grant that we might always seek the ways of peace and reconciliation and care for our neighbour. For the word of God has reminded us today that we are those who to our love and to give as we have so gratefully received. We thank you that you are the God who causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous, Lord. But help us always to show the better way, the ways of peace, love and reconciliation. So on this day of sacred remembrance, our Father, we thank you for the hope of the Gospel. We thank you that it is grounded in your eternal love for us and grant that we might show forth peace and love, that we might be channels of peace wherever we may be in the world. Be with your church worldwide, Lord, as she tells forth the story of redeeming love, of the Prince of Peace, of our coming King. And to you be all glory, honour and praise. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together and sing, The Lord's My Shepherd.
Well, dear friends, on this Remembrance Sunday, we thank God for the assurance of his word. And remember that we are called as the people of God to pray and to seek peace in our world. Many people will gather today in many different places. On this special hour of 11 o'clock, we will do it later here in Greenfield, as we remember those who gave so much for all that we have today. Those who died and were injured and traumatized in the two major world wars and every conflict since. It is a day when we remember, lest we forget and take for granted that which was given for our freedom. We come then and we look at the biblical perspective of remembrance. What does it mean? We look back and we are grateful for the gift of memory that we are able to look back and learn from the past. On Remembrance Sunday especially, we think of those who gave their lives in wars over the years, as well as those who continue to grieve over the loss of their loved ones. We want to remember, lest we forget, and we want to be sure that in remembrance is the impetus to seek a better world, a world of peace and reconciliation and love. We never underestimate the sacrifices that have been made, and even as the years go by, and as generations will come and follow our generation, they too will remember because this gift of remembrance we hand from one generation to another, lest we forget. Last week we looked at faith, the words of the Apostle Paul, you remember. Faith, hope and love, and the greatest, Paul said, is love. But he also said that hope is something that is grounded in the love of God because God gives us hope on a day like today. We learn from our past, hopefully, we learn lessons from our past. We remember that God gives us the incentive of hope that we might look to the future with confidence and hope. How do we do that in a day like today? Those who gave their lives to this freedom we have today were people who were filled with hope for a better tomorrow. Sadly and tragically, so many, so many never saw that hope fulfilled in their own lives. But they handed us a gift of hope for the future. We look around a world that is divided today. There are many wars and rumours of all. We don't seem to have learned the lessons, have we? Conflicts have arisen over the generations since the Second World War, and conflicts still exist today. Why then? Are we reason for hope on a day like today? Have we learned the lessons from the past? I sincerely hope we have. So from a biblical perspective, remembrance is important. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a day when the mountain of the Lord will rise. He was filled with hope. He had learned from the past. He had had a vision of God high and lifted up in his temple, the God who had sanctified him and called him to be a mission of hope, the messianic hope that would come of the fullness of time when God would send his son, the Prince of Peace, into the world to teach us the ways of love and generosity, kindness and forgiveness. Surely that is a hope that we hold on to today in the midst of all we see around us. Hope for a better world, for our children, our grandchildren. Hope in the climatic change that following what's happened in Glasgow. We have a hope that promises will be fulfilled, that decisions made will, will come to fruition. That is based on the concept of hope that we share today. And that hope is grounded in God's love for us. People ask me sometimes, why does God allow suffering to take place? Why doesn't God reveal himself? Why doesn't God do an end to suffering and pain? But you see, the God of the Bible identifies with our suffering. He has entered into the world through his Son, who died upon the cross for our sins. Jesus knew what pain and suffering and separation from his Father was. It is at Calvary we see God himself suffering. We see God suffering in the midst of the pain and the anguish of the cross and the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Father, forgive, he said, for they know not what they do. It was John Stott, the great theologian, who said, I could never myself believe in God if it were not for the cross. In the real world of pain, how could one worship a God who was immune to it? Martin Luther spoke of the crucified God. Where do we see God? Where do we actually see God? We see him on a cross, in pain and anguish, identifying with the pain and anguish of the world. God is with us in our suffering. God weeps with those who weeps. But we meet in the light of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. 
the final triumph over suffering, death and the grave. That's why we sing, lift high the cross, because God's means of it entering to the world of his, of his creation in suffering and pain, identifying with every pain and sorrow that we know or will know in our lives, entering to the suffering of tragedies of war and bringing us through in the assurance that death is not the end. Because that is his promise through the resurrection of his son from the dead. We stand today and we will remember and we will give thanks for those who gave so much. But death is not the end. Death is the door to which we enter into eternal life through the sacrifice of Christ and enter into the glory and the promise of light eternal. That's the promise. And that's why we remember today. And remember that God is love. And then, of course, we remember as well, and we are grateful today for all who gave of themselves for the sake of the liberty and freedom we have today. We live in a divided world, don't we? Since the Second World War, there have been many more conflicts, many lives have been lost. We've seen the horror of the emergence of terrorism and intimidation. We've seen many who have suffered, innocent people who have suffered because of the ravages of, of terrorism and fear. What's the answer then? Where do we go from here? Do we give up hope? No, we don't. Because God challenges us through his word to be channels of peace where we are. We are coming close to the Advent season now. We are coming into the promises of God fulfilled in Christ. We are remembering, as we have said, that God entered into the world of his creation and died in pain and agony, that we might know that God identifies with our pain, that he identifies with our weaknesses and our frailties and our fears, and gives us a way through. And that's why in this divided world, you and I are called to be channels of peace where we are. You and I are called to be ambassadors of this good news. The church is here for that very reason, to bring the light of love and the light of acceptance and the light of forgiveness in a world that is dark and evil. We hold that light high because it is the light of God. Breaking through the darkness and the terrorism and the fear. Friends, judgment will come upon evil. The word of God says. But for those who trust and believe, for those who have given of themselves for all that is good, we have that promise of an eternal rest and an eternal destiny with God. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. So today, dear friends, on this Remembrance Sunday, we give thanks for all those who have given so much, but we give thanks as well for the eternal hope that God gives us, for the light that shines in the darkness, for the suffering Christ who died upon the cross to, to, to identify with the pain and sorrow and suffering of the world. But we come in the light of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And we come as people who trust and believe in him and let our light shine in the world out there and be ambassadors of peace to make this world a better place. Let there be peace on earth, the old hymn says, and let it begin with me, with you and me, showing the, night, the loveliness of Jesus and spreading forth the love of gratitude and thanksgiving and brotherhood and sisterhood and care for others, whoever they may be, and to be channels of peace. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Whether it's hatred, let me sow love. Whether it's injury, pardon. Whether it's doubt, faith. Whether it's despair, hope. Whether it's darkness, light. Whether it's sadness, joy. Faith, hope, and love. These three remain. Thank God for the hope of the gospel today. Let us pray. Father, as we bring this service to a close, we thank you that we are able, at the appropriate time today, to stand and remember those who sacrificed so much. We are able to join with those who, like us, are full of gratitude and thanksgiving and are ever aware of the great sacrifice so many made for all that we often take for granted today. 
We pray now especially, Lord, for those who still suffer from the ravages of war, those who still remember loved ones they lost in the battlefields, those traumatized and injured in, two, in, in the, the Second World War and, of course, in every conflict since, those who are peacemakers in the world, that you might prosper their work, Lord, agents of reconciliation between people of different factions and, and different countries and different understandings. May they be bridges of peace and reconciliation in our world. Prosper their work, we pray. And thank you, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the crucified God who has entered into our pain and suffering and who gives us the assurance of that eternal life that is in him. Lord, hear our prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, dear friends, it's been a joy for Daryl and I to share with you today, and we pray that today will be a day of blessing to you. Next Sunday, Mrs. Christine Nicholas will be leading our worship. Christine is a faithful, lifelong member of Greenfield. She's been a lay preacher for many years. She lives in Kevin Keir and is very active in the church in Bethel, Kevin Keir. So that's where the service will come from next Sunday morning. We pray that you will know God's blessing then, as we hope you have known God's blessing today. May God's peace be in your hearts. A great hymn of remembrance and thanksgiving, O Valiant Heart.
And now may the God of peace, who brought from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the eternal covenant, grant you peace and hope in your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and always. Amen. <laughs>